Fox Sports Pueblo, 1350. This is the John Riston Show. Let's join the voices of the pack, Jim Brooks and Joe Serby, along with CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves head coach, John Riston. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House, Car Pro's John Riston Show, Dixie State Edition, as we move on to week 10 of this glorious football season. The head coach, John Riston, is here. It is glorious, isn't it, John? It's every, glorious. Every chance to play football for you guys is glorious. Every chance we get a chance to line up and play for 3,600 seconds on a Saturday afternoon is special. And it's not often that we get to do a Car Pros John Riston show with Game 7 of the World Series on right after us. Yeah, we're. Um, it's kind of cool. Yeah, kind of cool. Who you got tonight? I really uh, want the Astros to win. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of pulling that way, but money's on the Dodgers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the smart well, money. Joe, I think he's... I'm an American League guy, and, and yeah. Houston is... I, I love the fact that Sports Illustrated a couple years ago did the... Tw they did a cover that said the 2017 World Series champions, and they did it three years ago, and it was these Astros because of the young gro crop that they had. And I thought that such foresight, and they've been. it's been a great series to watch, and it's really been fun since we don't have I don't have a team in the fight so it's just been great fun to watch baseball but but uh, we'll keep an eye on that but we got to talk Let's football. talk some football. That's right. And the uh, Thunderwolves, another nice victory. Uh, Pueblo, or Pueblo West. Western State. Jeez. I got well, Pueblo West like, on my mind. You know, Pueblo West might have been a better team. Yeah. That's where I got to meet Joe on Thursday or Friday morning. He's out of Pueblo West. So it's on my mind. But Western State, as expected, John, I think uh, they come out defensively. They know how to play you guys in certain respects. Jazz is uh, well schooled in that, and their defensive line was uh, probably the best unit on their football team, I thought. And they gave you some problems early on, made you work a little bit. Yeah, there are two inside guys all week. We, were, we knew that they were well schooled. They played hard, 93 and 92. And uh, you know, they we and we didn't target ourselves right a lot of times. And because of what they were doing, they were twisting and took our aggressiveness away. But credit to those guys. They are just really well coached, and they get the most out of their players. They get the most, and I think that's quality coaching. And they they got a great scheme, and it just, sometimes it just, like I told Joe after the game, it's like sticking a pencil in my eye. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, uh, I, I, and we could have been better, obviously, but a lot of that is how hard they play and how we approach the game, too. And uh, I, I do know there's one side of the ball that was very dominant, and that was our defense. Well, talk about that a little bit. I, I was talking to Mark Kreiner and Don Elliott immediately today, and uh, there was a touchdown on the scoreboard <laughs> that was not allowed by the defense but shouldn't have been allowed at all. And I, I wonder if you would... I mean, you won the game handily, and it's it's a it's a byproduct of what happened on the field. But did you send that one to the, the conference to say, look, what were you all thinking? I uh, I did send it in, and um, I got an email yesterday afternoon that says uh, uh, basically we we didn't handle that right. Okay. And um, in my younger days, I probably would have said that's damn right, or <laughs> uh, are you sure? Yeah. Some smart ass. And so my older professional days, I have uh, I have learned to say thank you, appreciate the comment, and that was it. Well, I, I know on on the air we uh, as soon as it happened, I go Gene, you're going to be getting an email. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, our our friend Gene Bauman, the, the head of officials in, in the RMAC, we uh, we drop his name quite often, probably probably more well, so than he would like. <laughs> I, I I think you asked me as is uh, have you ever seen a, such a bad call? And he says, well, yeah, yeah. I have. Yeah, <laughs> last year, Mesa. And, <laughs> and both of them cost us touchdowns. Yeah. And, uh, it cost you a conference championship. It cost us a conference championship last year. So, you know, it, it's just, it's part of the game. It is. And uh, you got to deal with it. And um, sometimes you just can't believe what happens. And you got to overcome it. We were able to overcome it. And uh, I thought at one point that was going to be a momentum change, but right. we, we they were still in the ball game. I believe it was twenty to seven at that exactly. point. And um, 
So I was really concerned about that was going to light their fire and it was going to dwindle us. You, you know, just sure. it, because we started at a high level and just right. dwindle us. And it's hard down. to maintain and when it's it just really uh, so. But our kids responded, and I was really proud of that. And then the other penalty, I want to just because we're on that topic right now, and in, in the course of the game, it really didn't matter. But they had a back to back on sportsmanlike by the same guy. And I thought Jazz was going to have to be restrained by the Public County Sheriff's Department. What happened on that? Well, it, it happened right in our bench. Right. And uh, there was on our punt return. And um, they, uh, Trevor and them were locked up. And so he had him in balance and then twisted him and then took him to the ground out of balance. And then when he got up, he gave a little shove. Well, that was the same guy who blew our call. <laughs> there you go. So I, I, I think the way we handled that, we might have got a call there. Right. But I, I didn't say that. I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> but uh, the, the reality of it was that he thought that he twisted him, took him to the ground out of bounds when he should have let him go. And then the push was the other 15 yards. Okay. Yeah. And so after the game, when... Um, uh, Jazz was was. I said, "What were you screaming about over there?" And he goes, "Well, it should have never been called because it was out of bounds anyway, and they should have been making sure that it was all dead, and 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 go over there and because good officials can go over there and defuse it, right? And which they should. I'm not. An official should not say, "Did that have a factor in the play, or not?" Right. And then that didn't have a factor in the play. So you go and you say, "Men." Go over there real quick. Hustle over there. Say, get up. Cool it. Yeah. Get up. Yeah. Just get up. And if they don't, then, then I, I agree with right, you. Right, right. But I just can't stand lethargic officiating when it says they're battling, they're going, it's hard to hear the whistle, and guys are competing, and then they throw the flag like we're supposed to hear the whistle. I, I just think that's lethargic officiating. And that was a dagger. I mean, that, yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that they they could not recover from that. Exactly. Well, what was their explanation on the the play that we talked about? The uh, well, I guess they called it a back. Did they call it a backwards pass, or did they say? Uh, it was Marche a lateral. Had, oh, they said it was a backward pass. Okay, a lateral. So, it, it no way, it was, it was two yards lateral. backward pass. Because, he, one, he didn't have control over yeah. it. Ever. And the ball is two and a half yards in front of the... the, the right. uh, so, when our official, the line judge to that side, goes and sees the ball thrown, he immediately sticks out his hand. But he is seven yards from where the quarterback threw it. And he's calling the lateral, clear looking through the offensive lineman, defense alignment, the running backs, the tight ends, and the receivers, he can see that as a lateral. And the other guy that was thrown this side is going, I just don't know what happened. I just go, really? He had his mouth open. And he he was doing this. He was putting his whistle in the mouth to blow as a dead yeah, and then the guy picked it up, and he thought, "Oh, uh, maybe yeah. I missed." Well, and that's yeah. kind of what we saw is, yeah, is somebody was just too afraid to blow it dead because it happened exactly. on their sidelines, and they 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 sold it. That's I think that's yeah. what I said is is they sold that play to the officials, and give them credit for doing that. But you know that would have been nice to have a second shutout. Well. It, the reality is we should have had a second shot. Exactly. We did have a second shot. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, the scoreboard doesn't say that. But, well, we can't but talk it. about that yeah. defensive yeah. effort, though. That I mean, Jim and I were cleaning up and packing up our stuff and looking, and we kept looking at the final sheet going, 26. Wow. <laughs> Uh, 26 <laughs> yards. <laughs> you know, well, you got to factor we, in all the sack yardage, but still, yeah. you go. That is one heck of a defensive performance. Well, we we had 80 yards of uh, minus yardage. We got sacks or tackle behind the line. Negative plays. And okay. then um, when there was a mistake in the stats, so they had a total of 89 yards. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. But they only gave us 13, we only gave up 13 yards of passing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so that was uh, so, and still astounding. Even 80 some yards. Is four first amazing. downs in the entire game. Right. That's that's amazing. I, I think we had 10 out of 13 series was three and out. Yeah. And I think that's a really what, what, what we try to call is choke them out, tap them out, make sure we, we have that opportunity. They were ex they, they were exa they were frustrated. You know, as, as as good as a game as we could tell as as it was physically. And I thought you played well physically. I really did. From I mean, that I, I was kind of a more physical looking team than that. I, and I was happy to see that. Um, but you could tell you were you were doing all the right things Saturday scheme-wise, too, and frustrating them. 
Well, I, I think our, the, you know, we always talk about matchups. And so the strength in our matchup was our D line versus their O line with all the young guys they had. And so uh, I, I, when you have that, you have a long day on the other side of it. And one, one side's really celebrating when you have that type of matchup. And our, our speed on the outside, you know, well, one of the plays I think that goes unnoticed in this thing was that uh, when they went to Wildcat, right. we didn't fit that power exactly right. And um, it, it breaks uh, Tanner you know kind of makes a, doesn't make a play at the line of scrimmage and then but Tevin Donnell Chased takes him off him down. And, and that was a big play and then three plays later to keep playing I think Darius makes his one of his best interceptions of the year oh yeah it was really a, a one where he turned around and he looked and it looked like Willie Mays and he came back and he still had to do it staying in bounds and so I thought that was re really a classy play well that, was great. Another... well that was great though the the the, the, the the, the wildcat worked once. Right. And the <laughs> average kept going down. <laughs> Jim kept going. His yards per carry average, it was 65, and then it was 32. No, then it was just, 10. Yeah, he's cutting it in half, though, the rest of the way. <laughs> Testing our math skills. Well, defensively, got another touchdown, which is always nice. Yeah, that was uh, uh, re really nice about being um, in tune, making sure you know what you're doing and uh, playing great defense on that. And then the uh, big play on offense, uh, I mean, that was one of the most beautiful throws of the year, I would think. I, I called it dropping it in a bucket. I don't know what terminology you guys like to do when you're coaching it, but it looked like he just, he just dropped it right in there to I, Josh Smith. Yeah, I, I was really proud of... Uh, you know, we, we knew their safeties were going to bite on us. They're playing nine guys in the box, forcing us to throw. And, you know, we were kind of going three and out ourselves at that right. time. And and uh, we we knew if we kept being patient, the big play would come. Going back to e E.T.'s interception, it was really um, – they, they tried to set us up by having E.T. follow, and he baited it because Wade Leo and Kreiner are coaching this. Get your eyes back there. If no one's coming, you stay with it. If someone's coming, you're going to step, step in the flat. Well, he threw a perfect pass to E.T. because he baited him into throwing that right there. Yeah, it looked like the uh, the running back almost, maybe, he, was he supposed to cut under or was it just... just no, the he, they were trying to run the wheel. They, okay, they so there's a wheel route, out. but they just... He well, looked like, he looked like he was open, but like you said, E.T. E Joe asked him, what's your nickname? He goes, E.T. I go, E.T., you need a nickname. He goes, I have one. I go, what is it? He goes, E.T. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. It's the time to phone home, brother. But, yeah, it's just, it, no, like you said, the illusion was there that it was going to be open, and all of a sudden it wasn't. Well, the, the, the key to that is how uh, Coach Kreiner and Coach Leo Media are, are putting that in. And if you remember <clears throat> a couple years ago or even last year, uh, we would follow guys in, and we would never get back out on them. And so we, we put in a little adjustment in our coverages that we're, we're going to follow it in, and then our eyes are going to go to the backfield and then fall off on it. Well, and, and that's what it is. I think the great thing about a, a player like Emory Taylor, who's who's been in pretty much single coverage the, the, the entire season, is is he was coached to do that. And, he, and the first thing he said out of his mouth was, we have worked on that because that's what we saw we knew they were going to do. So it's neat that a kid was able to take it from the film room, take it from the practice field, take it from the coaches telling him 100,000 times <laughs> to the to the field on game day, and then it happened the way he was schooled in. And, and that's where I, I, I the, you just think of that great thing of trust where a player just, okay, I got to trust these guys. They told us exactly what was going to happen, and it happened, and I got to pick six. Well, I think that's when you got really something special is when you're, you're able to, the players are buying in, the coaches are enjoy coaching them. You, you don't have that friction. <laughs> right. And, and you're, you're, you're focused on your goal. I talk about it all the time. A 90 10 team, 90% of the time you focus on your goals, and 10% is all the other stuff that you deal with. Sometimes teams deal with 90% the other way, and 10% are right. focused on your goals. And so this team, I really believe, is focused on their goals. And we got to go win this on the road. You know, we got to go get this thing. And um, I, I, we're, we're excited to go play a really good Dixie State team. You know what I'm excited for? 
this three-minute timeout because all the stuff in front of us, Johnny, look at that. They brought out the quesadillas. I know uh, Rochelle last week had a leftover quesadilla, and this is what I was going to order tonight. So we got some already. Perfect. So that was going to be my post game. So I don't have to worry about post game now. I can go with something different. But we got uh, Joe's uh, Capri Suns here. <laughs> or Capricis. And uh, the pizza looks outstanding. Well, you know I won't be eating the pizza. It's got onions on it. Exactly. All right. More for you and me, Johnny. That's Johnny and, and Jimmy. All right. All right. So enjoy at. that. Come on down and join us here, though, at uh, Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. Got the World Series on. It's going to be excited. we got a few Dodgers fans here. I don't know. we got any Astros fans here? Everybody else that isn't wearing a Dodgers. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So come on down. We'll call this the Astros Bar here. So uh, come on down. Join us afterwards. Stay with us during the show. We're taking questions. 719-671-7574. Also have the hot mic ready here if you want to come in and give a question to John directly. You can do that. But once again, 719-671-7574. Back after this time out on the Car Pros John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo. And the John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. And welcome back. Car Pros John Riston Show. Here at the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. Oh, my goodness. The quesadillas. They did not disappoint. Got one of those. Uh, I got a quarter of it one down there. Joe, what you get? You get you get eight, three caprices? No, two. John had one. Oh, I thought you ate three. I thought no, you were really hungry. Uh, no, John had one. No, I think you did have three. I had one. Okay, fessing up. All right. Hey, hey, hey. Covering hey. for him. Safety first. <laughs> we go. got two more commercial breaks. That's right. You gotta, we got to pace ourselves here. But... Uh, but uh, in the ball game, John, as we get back to recapping Saturday's game, that uh, Rex played pretty good. Do you give him a little extra time there? Was that by design? You know, it's his senior day, and he was performing well, so I think you thought, well, you know, I'm just going to go with him. He's got a hot hand here well, in this I, game. I thought that uh, Rex deserved and earned every second he had a chance to play, and I'm very proud of the way he's responded. And so giving him that opportunity to play in front of his family that came up from San Antonio was awesome and so I thought he really played played really fast he did some good things his feet were underneath him and when he was throwing he wasn't all scattered all over right. and so as sometimes quarterbacks get and uh, Trevor Simeon okay never mind Sorry. and uh, I, I don't but, think Trevor could play for the Thunderwolves <laughs> <he's>, well okay <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> you guys see more of him than I have. Yeah, well, so that's I, true. I, I, I haven't seen very much of him, but I, I've heard all. He the played time. for your buddy, uh, Northwestern. Yeah, yeah. So. so he's played for two buddies right now. That's true. So, and uh, so a anyway, I thought that that Rex was was doing really well, and then we gave Brandon a quarter, and uh, Brandon showed a little rust, and uh, I'm glad. Uh, he had that opportunity, took a hit on the knee, took a hit on that. So I think uh, he, he's maturing into that guy again, you know. And, and so Rex is going to start. Rex is going to be, be there. And, and I know that's probably leading up to the race. Exactly. And uh, Rex is going to be our guy, and we're, we're going to give Brandon some time and uh, play the hot guy. Okay. You beat me to the question. Exactly right. You're well, getting good at this. Well, I, I figure I can anticipate a little. Well, eight years with me, you know, a bit, couple extra with Joe. Yeah. You know, that, that might have set you back a little bit. Now you're coming back. Yeah. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, just I'm, I'm trying to figure it. out why I'm the whipping boy tonight. I, I wrote good stuff this week. You did. And last week. You did a good job. I, you got to give a shout out tonight. I, I promise these guys I'd give them a shout out tonight. The the, the law firm of Carter, Cuda, and Tomlinson. Um, <laughs> the, the, the three specialists. Yeah. You got to understand. I I I go to a lot of practices and I have a lot of downtime at practice. And well, they have apparently a lot of, they, they have a lot of downtime. <laughs> practice they, they're like the most important people on your team, and they, and they and they practice as least amount as I do. But uh, these three kids, I'm telling you, they're they're great kids. They're fun to be around. They make you laugh a little bit because they're so goofy. But that's Mitch Carter, Tanner Kuda, and Andrew Tomlinson, and. Uh, they go, hey, man, we listen every week for a shout-out, and we never get one, and you, you always make the food sound so good. I said, well, come eat. Yeah. I said, you know, we thought, we thought about it, but we're just getting out of practice. I said, hey, come on down, but, you know, they, they didn't come in tonight. Well, the, the thing about those guys, they uh, got such a creative oh, yeah. sense of humor and creative uh, imagination on everything they do. And, 
the unique thing is that they've created their own Twitter page, as we discussed in the past. And, and now uh, they had a drone flying around uh, talking about uh, on their page about their just their highlight video of themselves about Tanner Kuda punting in the air. Oh, my. It's Carter on a great field goal. And I'm proud of that. Yeah, it's unbelievable. I, I, I really think that's first class, and I think it's kind of neat. And, and I think they were all doing it within the spirit of being a team. Well, and, and it is. It's, 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 like the, it's like the bullpen. Yeah, you know, you, find sure, you, to, you find your way to... The Astros up already. Yeah. But you find your way to, to, to pass the time. But they all know. Uh, you know, I, and I think you you coach special teams a lot of time, a lot of years, at a lot of levels. And sometimes you can overkick a guy, or and, and you know you get dead legs. So you got to walk that fine, especially week ten or week eleven, getting your kicks in, doing the things right, but not getting dead leg. Well, we we try to put a special schedule for them, which means, you know, we, right now we're in our uh, victory Monday mode where. Uh, after victories, we just watch tape on Monday. We don't practice and do some yoga and, and, and um, do some strength and conditioning in the mornings and watch tape and don't really practice. And then the, the kickers go out on Monday and usually go through their fundamentals. It's a big, heavy day, kick day. So I, I stopped them on Monday. Uh, it was weather was crappy, too. Right. And so, Cold. I, I told him we, we don't need to go out there. And then today, I always held him out on Wednesday. I've learned that. I had a kid, Justin Medlock, that uh, was leading the NCA from uh, out of UCLA. And, and uh, you know, his, his later on the year, his leg got dead and he didn't have any pop to it. And uh, so we quit kicking on Wednesday. And then Ma Mason Crosby's the other guy. He, right. He could go forever. He's an animal. Out yeah. There. He's just. It didn't matter what day it was doing him good, but Mason's still kicking in the league. Yeah, maybe, maybe that's he, a he's one of the best ever. Right, he's got to be one of the top five kickers in the history of the league. But, without question, I, but I, I think that I, my point was that you appreciate that nuance of the special teams. I mean, coverages and kickoffs and all that stuff. You know, people don't understand when they work on kickoff coverage sometimes. They don't even kick the ball. They they run down and then they throw a receiver a ball halfway up and then they return it. So they don't they don't waste a leg kicking off just to, to save save some leg. Well, I, I think we, we try to save all our legs because you know the goal is not to win a Tuesday or a Wednesday practice. The goal is to win Saturdays. And I used to younger we used to have to go win every Tuesday and Wednesday. And when when that happened. You, I, we didn't play very well, and so uh, I, I don't believe more is better. I believe in managing and being smart is better, and how you get your things done. Well, what the one the one thing that leads up to me for this question is, we're used to lots of touchbacks okay. with kickers, and Mitch Carter's not. It has seemed. It's, at times it seems like he really easily can, but at also other times it looks like he may not be trying to intentionally, and we didn't know if that's the case. Well, I, I really would like for him to kick it out. Okay. okay. And we're working on his hang time. It, really, a great kick is a four-second-plus hang time that lands right on the goal line. Okay. With that uh, formula, the speed of our guys can get down there below the 30-yard line. Our goal is to be below the 30-yard line, really the 27-yard line, if that was to happen. And then you can react and be able to do that. Mitch has been a little short on both of those goals, but he's still given us an opportunity to get down there and cover. But you're so fast that they kind of make up for that. Well, wait, wait, wait. what I'm saying is that right. you're exactly right, but if you kick it and you put it right where I told you right, to, right. it really becomes a great <laughs> dilemma for guys. All right, we're going to take another time out. We'll come back. we got some questions lined up for the head coach, John Riston here, texting him in here, 719-671-7574. If you're in the house here, want to come give us a question, we got the hot mic ready, and uh, we'll take them right here as well. We've got the Subaru Region 4 update here in front of us. We'll talk about that when we come back. We'll also take your questions. We'll also uh, get ready for this pivotal ball game this weekend on the road in St. George, Utah. That's all coming your way next. The, the uh, Car Pros, John Risson Zero here at the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Boy, our audience is getting 
getting better and better schooled each week. They hear the music. They know it's time to cheer, and they do well here. Carpro's John Riston Show. We are at the Thunder Zone Beats and Tap House. You know, it shows up two to nothing. If all the fans and everybody's wondering what the food's like here at the Thunder Zone, Thunder just endorsed a sausage patty that it was very, very good. And she's howling and she wants more. And, uh, you know, I howl for more. <laughs> Tundra, how was, how was it, Tundra? <laughs> She's distracted by the wings. Yeah, exactly. The we just land by. Oh, it there smells we like go. bacon coming by. <laughs> it smells like bacon, Roar. <laughs> I'll bark as much as you want to feed me. Yeah, there we go. Good job, Tundra. <laughs> Yeah, they just keep bringing it by, don't they? There goes the Thunder Dog. That thing is a thing of beauty. Oh, that is so good. Man, the chicken sausage, it's unbelievable. We got pizza here. We got the Caprese. We're working on these quesadillas. And you know what? You know, I just decided what I'm going to have afterwards. What are you going to go with? The Thunder Nachos. The Thunder no the Nachos. Was that what we had the other night? Oh, oh there was God. God. That was the best it's nachos I've ever had. That was a have... mountain of pleasure. Yeah, I'm going to have the Thunder the Thunder Nachos, the Macho Nachos afterwards. That's what I've uh, decided. Well, Johnny, we uh, got some questions lined up. But first, before we get to that, uh, Super Region 4 update came out. And uh, we're kind of documenting it during the game. Not a lot of help out there last Saturday. Everybody that was supposed to win pretty much did win. There was one game, I think uh, one of the, uh, it might have been uh, Sioux Falls, one of them had a chance to lose yeah. late, and they came back late and won. But uh, this week, chance for some more help out there, but uh, you're more focused on what you got to do, but uh, looking at the other teams in the region, the games are getting tough this time of year for everybody that's in contention. Well, I, I think the key to this is we got to have uh, the one losses to get to two losses. I, th I need the undefeated to stay undefeated. Right. And the way I look at it, the undefeated stay undefeated, we're going to be all right because they're playing some one-loss teams. Right. And so I, I need the unfe undefeated to win, and, and our, our schedule strength will, will be okay. Uh, we'll, we'll be in the top eight uh, with our uh, strength of schedule. We have quality wins. Um, obviously on our resume is a, a couple bad losses and so we we have to uh, go out and play these last two games to even give us a, a chance and so this is game one of that and we can only control what we can control and obviously we haven't learned our lesson from the last time we were on the road that we don't deserve to be in the playoffs and they're going to a place that's uh, new I just kind of I wanted to follow up just when we get to the questions is, yeah okay uh, turf or natural grass at Dixie? It's uh, turf. Okay. I don't right. know. I've never been there. It's, well, it's turf. It, it, We're going to find yeah. out. Yeah. All right. Turf. Ready? Yeah. All right. Go for it. This, okay. This is Claire, assistant. Hi, Claire. Hello. Claire Calio Women's. with uh, Women's Lacrosse, assistant coach. So we have the, uh, the baseball game. It's November 1st, and I have recently have seen a photo of you. Is there a chance that a no-shave November will appear? Uh, Ooh. Uh, probably not. <laughs> I, uh, it, 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 it's, uh, it, it'd be Santa Claus. It'd be all gray, all white. And, uh, I foreshadow. Look, I'm showing him what it could look like. So definitely not. <laughs> well, I, I see Larry Moe and Curly. No, I, I, I'm doing no shave November, but only on my back. Oh, okay. Well, I'm going no shave until... Now you all enjoy yeah. your meal. Yeah, exactly. Until we do a wow. TV game again. So there's a chance I shave tomorrow, Joe. We haven't found out yet. Right, if we're right. doing the South Ponderosa game tomorrow, if we are, then I'll shave. Because for TV, I clean up. Okay. But if not, I'm just going to let it roll again. Uh, you got a face for radio. That's exactly right, John. And uh, don't you forget it. And so do I. A good, good question. Uh, really? No shave November. You know, if you were if you're riding the hot streak, the Thunder Wolves. If you're riding the hot streak, you know you don't you don't mix it up. Like if you if you haven't shaved and you keep winning, you know it's like the playoff beards in hockey. But you shave every week, so and you you, you win. So it's it, there's no superstition there. Yeah, I, uh, Mitch Carter, the kicker, he shaved. He had a nice old beard going, and I go, "Did your girlfriend not like the beard?" He goes, "No, she liked the beard. I didn't like her." <laughs> <laughs> he's that's, got a chance in comedy. Oh, he's awesome. That's man. Great. These guys got more one-liners. Those three, they must sit there and plan it because they're 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 awesome. They they do have a sense of humor. 
Well, Tundra actually sent a question in before the before she got here. Well, good. What's the mascot for Dixie State? I don't know. It's, I do know. It's Trailblazers and uh, uh, it's a bison. It's a bison. Okay. Trailblazers and um, so that's what it is. All right. Uncle Charlie checking in. How's Uncle Charlie? You know, going? I forgot to go to Uncle Charlie's question last week. I was afraid I was going to be reprimanded, but he he just acted like I was. It, I hope he doesn't think I ignored him. He just says, hey, you're doing I just, great. Keep it I up. just forgot. I just forgot his comment last week because we had so many of them. But uh, let's see what he's got to say here. He's uh, proud of the ball club, as always. See? Which you're doing well. And uh, just wants to know, what's it going to take this week to go 1-0 against Dixie State? What's the big chore? What do you got in front of you? Hey, you know what? we got to go out and play with passion. You know, we got to go out and, and be guys that want to just go and lay it on the line for each other. Last time on the road, we didn't do that. We, get, then we have that passion to get the job done, and we play fast. We will be okay. Because I believe when you do those two things, you get an opportunity to compete on every play. And then you're playing fast and doing your job. But that's what we got to do. And we got to, it, it's it's a at least 11 hour, 11 and a half hour bus trip, and we're breaking it up. And, and so uh, we're going to go tomorrow night after practice to Grand Junction, spend the night, get up in the morning and travel to Cedar City, Utah, because there's no rooms in the den at uh, San George. And so we have to stay in Cedar City, and it's our drive in the morning. Uh, I want a question that somebody asked me the other day, and it's, can you wear the red pants on the road? Sure. Are you going to? No. <laughs> well, there you go. Good question. Why? Yeah. You're undefeated in red pants. Good point. I'm just saying. No. You like the all-whites. I like the all-whites. You know why? Good guys wear white. No, and, and you win a natty, yeah. and the all-whites, you got to stay the all-whites. I get that. No, I, I just haven't given it much thought, to tell you the truth. <laughs> I know all, I wanted to go all red, all white at home, and I, I didn't want to get into distractions saying, what are we wearing this week? And give them a choice, and maybe I should. But in all reality, I've stuck to our guns. That's what it's going to be, and maybe in the future we, we can open it up. And may, maybe it might be next week. I don't know, but this week we're going all white. When are you going to wear red pants and blue jerseys? Never. Okay, see, well, I don't know. You, just, so I wanted to, I you just know, like those, hearing you say never. Hey, those blue jerseys are hanging in every bar and booster <laughs> and, and, and corporate sponsor business that there is. I don't, those were, were those Russell? No, they were uh, New, Balance. New Balance. I don't think there are any New Balance jerseys left in the, in the Thunderbolt, Bowl, are there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> got a few. Got a few hanging things. around. All right. Yeah. Well, uh, one of our other uh, listeners wanted to know who the starting quarterback was going to be this week, but you already addressed that. Yeah, we're, we're going with Rex, and Rex had a good week of practice, but uh, Brent, Brandon's going to play, and, and he, he gets it, and, and uh, I'm, I'm looking for both of them to contribute to a victory. And then I found one of Uncle Charlie's other questions that I forgot to get to. He wants to know how you compare, how does this team compare to teams of the past? I know it's a, kind of an unwritten book here so far. we got to read these, get these final two chapters in, but so far, how does it compare to some of your teams of the past I think that uh, um, it, it'll be dependent on how we finish okay right. I think uh, this team has been a joy to coach been a lot of fun to coach they checked their egos at the door and they've let us coach them um, realize that we, we only have 14 seniors and um, I, I just, it's been a fun with the, these young guys and bringing them along and seeing our young red shirt freshmen play, right. sophomores play, and um, I, I just, it, it's been fun. I, it's hard for me to compare teams. It really is. It's hard to say, is this team better than the other teams? Is this team stronger than the other team? I don't know. The bottom line is the results of the victories that you have to have to find you as a team. Well, I, I, I agree. You know, this is a, this, this is a, a sports talk show question, though. And, you know, we sit here and say, I, I don't necessarily think that the 2014 team that won the national championship was the most talented team in the last 10 years. But they're the ones that got it done. So, in that regard, if, you, if, that's, all your, if that's all your baseline is, then that's the team. Well, I, I think there's a team that has the results. All those other things are very subjective. Sure. Very, um, I, I can't, 
if I function in a subjective world, <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't be very, I, I mean, I can't coach. Sure. No, you got it. It's, it's results so oriented. It's re, we're, I'm in a results oriented business. And so the results oriented business is getting 135 guys on the same page with your coaches and try to make sure that we go for the common goal. And if you play as hard as you can and go to work, that's all I could ever ask out of them. And I believe that the 14 team did that. I believe the 14 team said, I'm tired of going, winning a game and then getting out of the playoffs. And we had the right matchups for us. Well, we, it was we, a perfect storm, and, and and you played exceptionally well against some very good teams. Yeah. Well, I, 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 but the breaks, the home game, the home game, the home game, those things. But you have to have a little bit of that. You, you know, you it, it, you got to have a little luck, and, and they seized their opportunity. Absolutely. They carpet them. They, they went after it. And they carpeted their diem. Yeah. Yeah. So I got one other uh, listener wants to know, John, are you the, in vogue in college football with offenses is the spread offense, throw the ball all over the place. Have you ever been tempted to try to uh, incorporate more of that or you just like the way you have it? Because you're a quarterback. Do you think you'd be te- you don't like probably to throw the ball over the lot. Have you ever thought about, you know, why don't we just try this one game, see what happens? You know, I, I think there's... <coughs> Do you think you could function with your personnel? Yes. I think we, we could, and I think we'd function very well. But I also think there's uh, a point in a season, excuse me, there's a point as playing this game is is how do you gain that physicalness and i think there's one of the things that um i I take a lot of pride in 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 our program is that we will play as hard and as long as you want us to and um i'm not saying you can't do it as throwing a ball around I'm, i'm but i don't believe that's the best way to do it okay and and i'm just raised on being able to to run the ball, stop the run, and then you got a chance to win ball games. And, and the formula to me is that you play great defense, you, you manage the game offensively, and then you make big play special teams. And I believe that's a formula for success. And, and I'm not into the numbers and, right. and scoring and the fancy yardage that you have. But if you look at our scoring ratio compared to anybody else in the country, is our offense as bad as those guys? Or is it as good as those guys? Is our defense as great as those guys where we want it to be? I think it is. Yeah. And I think our offense is scoring enough points that we can win a ball game. And it, it, could we be flashy? Yeah. We could do a lot of different things. But I'm, I'm going to tell you, at the, at the end of 11 ball games that you're hopefully guaranteed for, I think you learn a lesson about being physical and being great at what you do. Well, you'll give up 600 yards all day as long as you win. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm into one, one stat. But you've never changed that. That's from day one when we talked in 2007 when you were building the team until now. That's been the, the, the basis of this, the way this program was built. Defense, manage offense, big play special team. That's, I mean, that's never wavered. Yeah, I, I, I guess that's how we've recruited to, and that's the way we're going to believe in. And I do think we got some outstanding skill guys, and we are throwing the ball better than we have, but I'm not going to sell out to it. Isn't that the beauty, though, of college football? You can Pro football, I think, is a victim of its own self because it's so vanilla. Everybody does the I, same plays, the same exactly. sets. College football, you can win in any number of different ways, and you see it on a weekly basis, teams doing all kinds of different different things uh, you know you we have it all in our own state we got Air Force that runs the option Navy runs the option there's teams that run that option teams that uh, throw it all over the lot there's uh, more sledgehammer type teams might make me Iowa or Michigan but there's any number of ways you can get it done and, and, and look who's winning though the defensive teams I, I think that you got to play gr- I know if you don't have a defense it, it, it's tough and the defense if they have the ability to choke them out and play hard and and give you a chance to keep the score at a very minimum, you have a chance to win a ball game. All right, we're going to take another time out here. We thank everybody for the questions. Just got another one that came in, so we'll get that on the other side of this break. But uh, we'll come back after this time out. Car Pros, John Riston Show. We are at the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. The John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. And 
and welcome back. Final segment of the Car Pros John Riston Show here from the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. Still hitting here in the uh, bottom of the first. We'd be already be in commercial on TV if I was on Pyre and Joe. Tweak would have been out on the first three pitches. Yeah, he is. Oh, and then you just hit him. Well, if you're going to put him on, you might as well yeah, drill him. There you go. Yeah, all right. Base is loaded. Two outs. <laughs> bottom of the first. That's the Bob Gibson theory. Well, I might as well just, or John Drysdale. Yeah, I might use that, just put use that down last there. one and plunk, plunk it. <laughs> all right. Well, we got Dixie State this weekend, John. Before the season started, you thought this would be one of the top teams yes. in the conference. It hasn't worked out that way for them, but as the season's gone along, they've gotten better. I think uh, this is a very dangerous team at home. They really play a lot faster at home, and, and uh, I, I think um, was uh, I was evaluating as the talent that was coming back and the, the talent of the coaches and being able to mix it all together. I thought this team was the third best team in the RMAC. Well, then they lose to Highlands. Well. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know, I mean, and, and it, that was ten weeks ago. It was. It was. It was so, week one, was it not? It was, yes. yes. It was week one. But I, I just, uh, when they're good, they're really good. When they're not, they're not. I guess I've, I guess they're kind of a feast or famine team. Well, I, I think they they are very solid in uh, their uh, defense. They play fast. Their sound. Their corners are the best corners uh, besides our guys. I think that uh, they're. They play very, very structured type of defense. They changed quarterbacks uh, and brought in a, a guy that's a local kid that is very, very talented with the ball. I mean, he's dangerous. Is that the kid last week that yeah. he had five touchdowns? He, he was the RMAC player of yeah. the week. And so uh, he, he's a special type. He came in in the second half basically versus uh, Mines and uh, gave them a um, – uh, almost brought him back and beat Mines almost at in Golden, and so, and uh, they, they they either struggle a little bit offense or they've been been awesome, and so I, I think that uh, again our defense going to be able to they have to stop the run, we got to try to make them one dimensional offensively. We got to control the ball. We got to get our defense to rest on the field, and so we got to just keep making first downs and keep being positive on that, and and not beat ourselves. You know we beat our ourselves with some really foolish penalties and and, uh, um, and we, we got to make sure we have great ball security. Yeah, I think that's the key this week. Like you said, defensively, you got to come out and kind of squash them, don't you? You don't want them to have any sort of confidence because confidence breeds confidence. And then you talk about that snowball you like to talk about, the avalanche that could come down on you. Yeah, you got to be... You got to be fundamentally sound, and you got to have play with great energy, great focus. And I think this is an environment too. I, they're expecting four to five thousand people here, and, and uh, I, I think it's it's going to be a great environment. This is a playoff mentality you got to have. Uh, and so I'm, I'm anxious to see our guys respond. What do they run offensively? They're they're a uh, any, anywhere from uh, three wide receivers to a tight end to two backs. They run the zone, zone read, the power read, and then they they try to either run a bubble and get you outstretched. They got some outstanding receivers. That uh, this kid last year, Orlando, that came up and made some great plays. Um, they're, they're very similar in their run game as we are, and uh, we're I'm I'm anxious to go compete against these guys. I have a lot of respect for them. And you don't have real ties to Shane McClure. No, not at all. Okay, we got one more question that came in. Okay. You know, we talked about the defense. Two and two now, Williams and Taylor, E.T. and Darius on this interception for touchdown battle. Who's going to get the tiebreaker this weekend? Well, if I had a crystal ball, yeah. which I don't, okay, uh, I can tell you next week. <laughs> okay. I'm with that. Why don't they both get one? And then we can settle this on the You know, if they each get one each week... Then we can keep the argument going. Well, and we, like we said on the air Saturday, you notice that when the games and your, your, your second teamers are in on, on both sides of the ball, those guys are still out there, still playing, still playing hard, still trying to get. Uh, they, they look at it as opportunities. Let's just, just put it that way. They, they can't get off the field. 
Yeah. Well, you got to like that as a coach. I mean, it, it, you, you worry about injury, but, hey, you'd rather have them want to be on the field than want to come off. Yeah, they're uh, two heck of a kids. They're grown up and maturing every day, and they just love playing the game, and it sees by how many plays, how many reps they can get, and, and uh, they re- responded to Coach Leo's coaching, and it's been been tremendous to see their growth. And you talked about Dixie State. We'll get back to them here, and where they're situated, you know, geographically, I think they sit in a nice spot that they could be probably one of those programs along with Mesa that could be a perennial power in this conference. Wouldn't you think? Wouldn't you like to have that area to recruit from? You're you're close to L.A. You know, all them down the coast Nevada, of uh, you got at Las Vegas, you get uh, Arizona. I mean, it's a good spot. I think their their school is one of the fastest growing schools in the country, and uh, I think they develop a nice little price point for kids to go to school there. It's a great location, and they've done a good job of growing this from being a junior college, per se, when they started this, to uh, they, they're trying to do all the right things. You have to see the rent- renderings of their new stadium they're building. It's unbelievable. They're, they're going to have some of the best facilities in Division two, and um, I think it's cool. I think that's all part of the Pueblo factor, too. Well, they used to be a, a, a junior college that was a feeder school for BYU and Utah. And in the snow the same right. way, those those two junior colleges were kind of feeder schools, and then they decided to go Division Two, which I think was a smart move for them. Kind of, they're kind of in that cradle of no one to go with them, but uh, they're growing rapidly. Got about a minute to go here. Yeah, so I, I think this is going to be a great opportunity for us to go on the roof, make sure we have great resolve. I see that. You know, the resolve is about being able to go and not not get caught up in them being on a bus, making sure that you're focused on your job. And so, and then that goes in the game. You know, things aren't going to go your way at home, but all we need is us. And that resolve is all about us being able to do those things. So I'm looking for one heck of a playoff mentality competition, and I'm looking forward to go compete on Saturday. All right, takes two wins to win a conference title. Stage one is Saturday. We'll have it uh, for you right here on Fox Sports Pueblo. It'll be a 12:30 pregame show, one o'clock kickoff from uh, St. George, Utah, down there in the southwest corner of uh, the the beautiful state, and we'll uh, be there for you to bring you the ball game. Special thanks to uh, everybody involved, especially Car Pros, for uh, sponsoring the John Risson Show, everybody here for uh, the Thunder Zone Pizza and Tap House. Caitlin Norton's been our producer and engineer for the head coach, John Riston. For Joe Servi, I'm Jim Brooks. Good night, everybody. Go Pack! for listening to the John Riston Show on Fox Sports Pueblo 1350. Tune in again next week at the same time for all things CSU Pueblo Thunderwolves football. Only on Fox Sports 1350. ACCY Pueblo.